lighting design. In this part, we will discuss surfaces. Hello, my name is Madula Torres Lopez, and in the coming minutes, I will take you through a journey of elements that you can use when creating lighting designs. I call this presentation surfaces, since, as we know, light needs surfaces to be perceived and reflected. Hopefully, at the end of this presentation, you can have a better understanding on how to interpret the magic dialogue of light and surfaces. Having said that, let's uh, start the journey. Surfaces can play a main role in the composition of light. Understanding the interaction of light, surfaces and materials can help us on revealing a captivating and memorable story through their magic dialogue. Surfaces are made of different materials, and material has a major impact on the perception of lighting effects by absorbing, transmitting, or reflecting light. Light makes specific characteristics of materials visible according to its brightness, angle of incidence of light, and color. Light makes specific characteristics of materials and surfaces such as roughness and depth visible by being absorbed, transmitted, or reflected. The perception of texture has a dynamic component because it depends on our viewing angle. Extreme light incidence angle create exceptional variations in the surface. Small differences on height are made visible because of the patterns of shades. This is the case when we observe a sunrise or sunset interacting with the landscape around, as observed here in these uh, two pictures. Texture can vary from homogeneous to patterned. Materials with smooth reflecting surfaces appear homogeneous in texture, as clearly seen here in this uh, image. Shiny polished surfaces vary in pattern as we look at them from different angles. Ripples on the surface of water produce dynamic lighting patterns. As you can see in this image, this is something we have seen several times on the ocean or in a, in a swimming pool, for instance. Pattern-like textures can be seen in the forest, where sunlight shines through leaves of trees. This same effect can be simulated with artificial light or with daylight in a marvelous play with architecture. But what influences the perception of lighting effects? Material properties. The way surfaces reflect light depends directly on the properties material has. To determine the lighting levels, direction, and impression to be created on a surface, the following factors must be considered. Color, texture, transmission mode, luster in surfaces, and reflection coefficient, but also angle of incidence and the position of the observer in relation to the material. Let's see now in the next slides a broad explanation about previous factors. Color. The interaction can be accentuated by using a same color of light than the material one. See uh, in this example, how the natural appearance of different materials can be enhanced or dramatically changed when using white or green light, for instance. You can see it here. This simple factor can be used as a tool when creating lighting designs. We will see now some other examples of it. In this picture, the reddish glow created by the interaction of candles and the red rocks during the event called Night of Candles in Petra it's an extraordinary example of the use of very warm light to enhance and create a very special mystical effect. This uh, image makes evident how material and light can detonate a marvelous dialogue. This is another example of the warm natural light created during sunrise or sunsets and how it enhances the beauty of the building's material. In this slide, and on the pursuit of achieving a more dramatic change or influence in the material, this building could also be reinvented every day by the use of RGB dynamic luminaires. Texture. 
At a more macroscopic scale, the visual appearance of texture in materials can be altered by light. The relief describes the structure of the surface. By the use, by the use of shadows, light can exacerbate the relief or flatten it. In the left pictures, we observe an example of front lighting flattering volume of all architectural elements. They all look in the same level, no depth, no layer perception, no intention to differentiate planes. The middle picture shows a restaurant in Oakland that achieved with just one candle in each table, enhancing the pretty texture and volume of the brick wall. Candle is glowing with certain closeness to the wall. And it is all that is needed to create drama, intimacy, and make it, making a strong statement by simply using materials beauty. Last picture. Right picture shows a well-known technique often used to reveal texture of materials. If a material is supposed to be even, but it has irregularities or damages, grazing light might not be the best solution, actually. On the other hand, if the relief of the stone wall is something that we can underline, the grazing effect is a very suitable technique. Also notice that it creates shadows, and shadows increment the depth of material, giving a more dramatic impression. So depending on what message we want to transmit, keep in mind that light can flatten or enhance according to its direction and position. Now we will jump to the understanding of transmission mode, a bit more technical than that, uh, what we have seen so far, but still tremendously important to make use of, its, uh, of it as another tool to transmit our lighting ideas. Uh, let's start by describing opacity or opaque materials. It's when no, no light gets through. It's a medium which transmits no radiation in the spectral range of interest. Some examples of opaque materials can be cardboard, uh, wood, concrete, or metal, for instance. Uh, however, depending on the material char characteristics itself, light can interact and play in a main role on revealing the marvelous beauty of it, as shown in this uh, image. So you can see a very strong 3D effect. Second one, uh, translucency or translucent materials. Here I will quote a definition taken from the book Archispeak which uh, describes in a very poetic and inspiring way the concept. Translucency is the less distinct but discriminating version of transparency. While transparency provides a modernist and dual revelation of reflection and visual access, translucency is more guarded in its disclosure. While transparency removes all doubt and reveals the the spectacle of display, translucency interposes enigma and ambiguity. Beloved by architects who base their designs in the glow of luminescence and in the diffuse scattering of light. Translucency provides a screen through which only the ghosting of shadowy movement is filtered. Well, uh, I personally find this quote quite inspiring, but I would say you almost feel like star using translucency and light in our designs, as shown in the image, um, in the images here. Now, uh, looking at this image, Japanese architecture makes evident the recurrent use of translucency and how this can softly transmit light into spaces. They are the master of it, by the way. Uh, last of the transmission modes, transparency or transparent materials. Very well known transparent materials are clear plastic or acrylic, laminating material, clear glass or transparent water. When the material is completely transparent, it does not catch any light. The light goes through completely. In case a facade is made of transparent material like glass, we cannot illuminate it. What we can do um, is illuminate the material behind, as shown in this uh, image. And as well described in previous slides, transparency removes all doubt and reveals the spectacle of display. No mystery, no intimacy, but still another element that can create very strong messages or statements that can match 
our lighting concepts. Uh, here a, per a perfect example of it. I would say a captivating use of transparent material that can capture light in the borders, creating an evocative dialogue between light and transparency. Uh, we will now move to the description of reflection, which add other possibilities to the number of tools we can use when we are creating our lighting designs. We will start by saying that when light makes contact with the surface at a microscopic level, some of the light radiation bounces off the material, a phenomenon known as reflection. It is a process by which radiation is returned by a surface or a medium without change of frequency of its components. This phenomenon can occur in a specular, mixed or diffuse way. To make it more clear, let's see each case in the following slides. When light falls on a perfectly flat surface or mirror-like, it will be reflected with a specular reflection. It means in one main direction. In that case, the reflection angle of light is equal to its angle of incidence. Specular reflection takes place in a specific direction so that it is possible to see a reflected image of the light so source and other things in the environment. Just um, yeah, look at the image on the left side. However, um, in the real world, the majority of ob objects make more complex surfaces that generate diffuse reflections. In that case, the reflected light is thrown in all directions. A case of this can be seen in the right pictures, where due to the movement in the water, the image reflected gets a bit, um, a bit blurry. Well, therefore, we can conclude that reflection depends on the luster of surfaces. Um, let's then see what it is uh, about. Luster of materials can be described as uh, specular reflection. In a technical way, is a reflection in accordance with the laws of geometrical optics without diffusion, meaning that in a, in a very flat surface behaves almost like a mirror. The biggest part of the beam of light is reflected in one main direction. This component can be wisely used in combination with lighting effects as shown in the left image. Narrow scatter reflection. The nature of these materials create a more diffuse reflection, meaning that a smaller part of the light reaches the eye of the observer. This is almost similar to specular surfaces, but is likely more diffuse. Uh, still, clarity in the reflections can be easily perceived and described by human eye, as you can see in the right uh, picture. Another two steps in the luster of surfaces are wide scatter reflection, uh, this means that uh, the reflected light is much more diffuse than in the previous case. A big part of light is reflected towards the observers. Image get a more diffused impression as perceived in the first image. And um, last one or last step on the scales is this is diffused uh, reflection. Um, diffusion by reflection in which on the mac macroscopic scale, there is no regular reflection, as you can see in the left picture. In that case, the reflected light is widely uh, diffused. Uh, this last one can offer an element of mystery when combined with lit objects by not revealing completely what we are illuminating. A marvelous use of luster in surfaces is the Tag Mahal, an extraordinary example using reflection as an, ext as an extension of architecture itself. I would say, uh, well, just imagine the same image at night. Uh, well, now uh, we are reaching the last slide of the presentation. Uh, in the next slide, we'll briefly see the reflection coefficients and the importance in lighting design. Well, uh, in a very concrete way, we should say that quantity of light reflected depend, depends directly on reflection coefficients. Material coefficient is influenced by all previous factors described along this presentation, such as color, texture, transmission mode, and luster in surfaces. 
Um, yeah, as you might know, the importance of coefficients impact directly on assessing the amount of light we will use in different surfaces to achieve the expected result as preconceived in our concept. Here, the indisputable importance of knowing beforehand how light will interact with the materials we are working with in our projects. With this last slide, um, we now can conclude saying that surfaces and materials play one of the main roles when creating lighting designs. Uh, having a good understanding and using them in a creative way can give us the right tools to achieve successful and remarkable lighting experiences. Well, um, that's uh, it for now. I hope uh, after this presentation, you can have a better understanding on the pl plasticity of light. Um, yeah, thank you very much for your attention.